There's a saying in Austin that we live here, we give here. These are all the 99 names of Allah going around the entire central portion. Even the calligraphy is just raised slightly. Oh, I mean, mashallah, we have such a diverse community here. Like myself, I'm a convert to Islam. So all the way up into the dome is also a calligraphy with Quran written. That is actually a, a different sister who does a decal type onlay uh, wording. Even some of the decoration, we had a, a local artist who has a, a wood cutting business. business. Yeah. Normal size is usually about a 48 inch distance, but we right. made it just a little bit wider, 51 inches, just so when you're in Sujud, you have just that little bit extra space. So it'll say at the Kursi so, uh, around the, uh, the inside, starting from right here in the center. Now looking into the balcony, sure. you get a really nice view of, of the entire area. You also can kind of understand the size of it now. So yes. you know, pretty big square Absolutely. footage. And tell us, uh, Dr. Lowe, about these magnificent, beautiful walls. We do have a sister local in the area. Mashallah, she can make, I think, four feet wide by whatever size, you know, pretty large. She has a laser wood engraving type business. And so, you know, these are actually handmade, laser crafted and carved into the wood with these designs, really beautiful, intricate designs. Um, the next thing is our Imam. Uh, mashallah, he's, he's wonderful. He really has, has a message that really hits home with families and people with children, people who are retired, whatever. He has a very good message. So Islam is the fastest growing religion in the United States, Khatara in Urdu, Khatara in Arabic, Khatara in English, uh, teaching each other calligraphy. We have a hijabista club, which is like young girls doing uh, fashion with their hijab wear and, and modest clothing. We have breakfast I mean, every Sunday after breakfast, and we just had our 100th uh, breakfast. So we have people coming, but it's all ways to have people come to the masjid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi My name is Eric Lowe. I am one of the Shura Council members here at Islamic Center Brushy Creek. Um, I've been a member of this community for just over 10 years. I moved here 2013. I've been on the Shura Council on two different terms, once in uh, 2016, 2017, and then again, I've been back on for a year and a half at this present time. Um, I'm also the Shura Council coordinator, so I arrange uh, the Shura Council meetings and uh, sort of help coordinate with the executive board. So let's begin with the history of the masjid. So this property is several acres uh, on Brushy Creek Road here in Cedar Park, Texas, which is just outside of Austin. The property was purchased in about 2007 or so. And so everything you see here is a lot of it is new, but actually the building right behind me was the original building on the property. It was just a house. It was a private residence uh, on a large amount of acreage. Even right where we are right now was completely covered with trees. This was just a sort of a small road coming from the road up to this house. And so this became the first uh, masala and masjid. Actually, when I came in 2013, uh, it was still sort of fitted as a house. So there was like a kitchen, a living room, two bedrooms, the bathroom and so forth. And so just depending on, you know, what time, how early you got to pray. If you were here early, you'd pray in the living room at the very front by the fireplace. If you got a little bit later, you'd be in one of the bedrooms. And if you came late, you'd be at the back in the kind of the back rooms. Eventually, we did some nice renovation to essentially gut out all the walls, except for the support beams of the house. And we were able to to essentially just turn the entire flooring of the house into prayer area, put new carpet down with the rows and everything which you could see inside. And so that became sort of the main prayer hall for many years. If you look to this side here, this structure was actually just a deck. Uh, it was literally an outdoor deck of wood. This would be sort of a secondary prayer area. So on some hot, you know, Austin Juma Friday prayers, if you came and the, the inside of the house was full, then be praying out here on the deck. But then as time went on, we even enclosed this space. This actually became a place for the adult sisters and uh, children who are older teenagers that would be seeking more peace and quiet during prayer. Younger children can be more noisy, so we have a, a separate room for mothers with very small children, but this room essentially became sort of older adult sisters seeking a little bit more solace during prayer. Right. So this is the original? This is the original masjid, yeah. So this is kind of all that's left of the original kitchen, just this masjid. sink and countertop. But this area was essentially the kitchen, a kind of a little dining spot. And this right. was the living room. This is essentially the, the minbar. This is where the imam would stand, give the khutbah on the Fridays and, and for hatara, and, and we would pray along this area. So there'd be, you know, brothers starting to make rows here and, and you can notice the carpet. Yeah. So this was installed as we did the, the first round of renovation. The wall behind you was only recently added, actually. So oh, when, really? we, when we gutted it the first time around, this whole area was one solid flow through. We put this wall back in just so we can use it as a classroom. We actually needed a partition because we do Islamic school here on Sundays. There are uh, students that are memorizing Quran. So it actually helped to sort of create a barrier, but this was the rest That's of the main prayer area. 
Subhanallah. Such humble beginnings. Yeah, this yeah, of course. This part of the country is, is growing so rapidly. So, you know, every day more people move here and mm -hmm. every day more Muslims move here. Every day more people convert to Islam. And so just the community has just been growing and growing. And, you yes. know, every time there was more people, we just needed more space. And 2007 nice. when the property was bought and when this was the house. Oh, so sure. this was like the second bedroom, 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 bedroom. Bathroom was in there, just sort of took out, you know, all, obviously all you see is the support beams left and yes. everything else was just opened up as much as possible so we could accommodate as many people praying. And right now this is being used for... This is said. a classroom, Islamic school, almost all day on Sundays and then in the evening, so tonight at about 5.30, the students that do the after school Quran Hifs program will right. arrive. They'll be in here, so like younger girls, like my daughter's age is in this room and then um, right. some of the teenage boys are actually upstairs in the new masjid for that kind of stuff. And uh, I was thinking 2007 is not that long ago. What happened? A lot of Muslims move into this area in Brushy Creek, Cedar Park? Yeah, and, and in Austin there was already growing Muslim community. There's some other masajid that are here that are, have been around even longer than that. But this being sort of northwest area of Austin in the suburban right. area, just more people that were you know, living in this area it would be a long drive. It could be a 30 minute drive into central Austin right. you know, to pray. So the original founding brothers bought this property with a alhamdulillah, beautiful vision that mm -hmm. one day we'd have all this here. This was an area that essentially also got converted into the sisters area. Oh. Right now it is our medical clinic. So we do a free medical clinic right now. We do this uh, in the evenings on Fridays. And so that's actually the clinic there. It was prior to our expansion sisters prayer area. So this is a free clinic for people who cannot afford. Correct. It's basically nonprofit charity based primary care. Just incidentally though, the bottom floor of this new expansion mm -hmm. just off to this uh, westernmost side is going to be the new clinic. So there will be, it's a standalone clinic. It'll have an entrance area, reception, waiting room, doctor's office, three or four exam rooms. Masha. And it'll have its own entrance even. So you, you could get into the clinic without having to go into the masjid first. As we expanded, we just had this area. This was the prayer area. And then we started thinking time for expansion. And again, this was 2015 or so and beyond when we really started doing fundraising in order to do this. Phase zero of that was the parking lot. So right. the full kind of perimeter of this property. It's sort of a triangle shaped property. Yes. We put in the entire parking lot. I think there's 250 or maybe more parking spaces. We put in the children's play area. The very back of the property is a full size basketball court. So that was essentially like phase zero. And then phase one was this larger prayer hall uh, masjid area. <laughs> We can go inside yeah. there. And this area, as we see, this is benches for yeah, this, everybody. You know, of course, it's been through all the things like I mentioned. It was basically just a lot of trees at first, and then yes. this area got paved. Uh, the turf is new this summer. We actually just put that in because people will, you know, eat out here, especially during Ramadan. You know, a lot of our iftar is done in this area so, um, and on the parking lot. Yeah, there's so many uses to this property, so we sort of just find what, what best place yeah. suits it. And so, yeah, sure. you know, this is obviously we have to eat, so then yes. this becomes a de facto sort of dining area but Absolutely. every single Sunday morning we just actually celebrated our 100th uh, breakfast we do fudger and then we do breakfast we have a large amount of people that are here on Sunday mornings Sunday. after fudger for breakfast Sunday. that's fantastic yep. yes. This is our uh, main entrance area, so the kind of the foyer as you come in, which will give you an entrance into the main hall. This is just our uh, cubby areas for all of our shoes and the men's restroom and wudu area. Good few number of wudu station here. And then there's essentially a copycat matching version of this for the sisters on the right. other side of the building. Even some of the decoration, we had a, a local artist who has a, a wood cutting this business. Is this is our, our water station. So. I don't know if you've noticed around the masjid, you see signs that say go green. Starting a few years back, ICBC did a go green project where people would come to Ramadan and there would be crates and crates and crates of plastic bottles. People open it, take one sip, throw it away, set it down, walk away. Yeah. You know, you'd be pouring out gallons of water. Um, and so we sort of made a policy. We don't have plastic water bottles here on the property. You bring your own. There's these refilling stations. We have refilling outside. So even during Ramadan with the thirstiest of people, uh, you won't find any plastic bottles. Mm -hmm. Even like our iftar, we use compostable forks and serving platters and such. <laughs>
sala. This essentially is uh, the men's prayer area. Of course, on busy days, Friday, Juma, and then of course during Ramadan, this place is honestly, mashallah, packed from front to back as far as you can. We have our, you know, our carpet with the rose. And there's a really wonderful company out of Turkey that uh, sources through New Jersey. Uh, normal size is usually about a 48 inch distance, but we right. made it just a little bit wider, 51 inches, just so when you're in sujood, you have just that little bit extra space. A lot of the masajid have the, you know, these kind of styles of big, long, wide carpet. Mashallah. And tell us, uh, Dr. Lowe, about these magnificent, beautiful walls. We do have a sister local in the area. Mashallah, she can make, I think, four feet wide by whatever size, you know, pretty large. And she has a laser wood engraving type business. And so, you know, these are actually handmade, laser crafted and um, carved into the wood with these designs. And I mean, if you get up really close, like, really beautiful intricate designs and it kind of repeats itself um, onto it's, the area that kind of arches over the minbar. A little green inlay behind those areas. It goes all the way floor to ceiling if you can see it up to the top there. Absolutely. And then uh, similarly she did, these are all the 99 names of Allah going around the entire central portion. Even the calligraphy is just raised slightly pieces of wood but you know it's it's in the style of calligraphy saying all the, the 99 Absolutely. names of Allah. SubhanAllah, I love the fact that I think it's the first First time I've seen it that the names of Allah are written, but also their English translation. Put the translation, yeah. Right. So yeah. some people who don't understand. So Arabic. I mean, mashallah, we have such a diverse community here. I mean, there's a lot of people that like like myself. I'm a convert to Islam, so you Masha. know, did not grow up speaking Arabic. But many people, Arabic is not their their first language. Um, we have people from Africa and Southeast Asia and Europe all over. So yeah, we put the English in. We do a lot of outreach to just the the community itself. So even when non-Muslims come, a lot of people have heard like the 99 names of Allah, but what actually are those names? So when people yes. come to visit, they can sort of read what Allah is: Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, the Compassionate, the Merciful. Absolutely. Um, the main one, Allah's name Himself, uh, in the center there. Very beautiful, and then very intricate. All the way up into the dome is also uh, calligraphy with Quran written. Musabana. Tell us about that, Dr. Lowe. So that is actually a, a different sister who does a decal type onlay uh, wording. We have a couple areas down here kind of closed in with the glass a little bit. So fathers mm -hmm. with uh, children, if the children start to get you know fussy or yes. making a little bit more noise, then they can just go in there and that way, just in case, you know, if they're loud, then um, you know, the people that are praying more in the central area, you can imagine how the, it could start to echo and, and go Absolutely. off. So it keeps the sound down a little bit. And then this same area is just like that, uh, but it can even be even more soundproof right. with the partition wall that goes through. Most of the time, sort of lower volume areas of prayer than this, the brothers will go on this first line and then sisters will pray in this area. So this is a multi, multi-utility room. Yeah, so just, you know, a lot of people here open up the doors, uh, make it part of the main hall. Yeah. Uh, a lot of kids here, kids can stay in here, be a little bit noisier. Yes. TV's there so they can still hear uh, and see the imam. And so this is one of the sisters' yes. restrooms and wudu area. Some shoe cubbies for the sisters there. And then, you know, on your average day, the sisters are usually going to come in through. Right. So, you know, park here and they can come in there. Can, they can kind of skip if they don't want to come in through the main. Right. We have our elevator, uh, just in case anyone has any difficulty using the stairs. Especially for the elders. Elderly, elderly sisters, yeah. Mashallah, brother Eric. Massive, beautiful for coal. So this is like a wood uh, engraving. This is a brother who lives in Houston. Houston, actually, so uh, you'll notice it's it's kind of large panels, but the verses of the Quran are etched uh, directly into the wood itself. It's it's heavy, mashallah. Yeah. And the, you can feel the weight of the the surahs and also the way the size of it. So then, just at the top of the landing, there's sort of some seating for for sisters if they just want to. Hang out and relax a little bit. We have this very large portrait of the Kaaba in Masjid al Haram in Mecca. Okay, this is uh, the upstairs sisters' wudu area, yes. restroom, shoe cubbies. The whole top floor is actually dedicated to sisters. So if the if the bottom floor is completely full, brothers, most anyone who's up here is going to be the sisters uh, during prayer times. Right. But this is also a classroom for the uh, the Hifs students, the students that are doing Quran memorization. So right. this will teenage boys and up during times of Juma. Right. Then it can also be a soundproof area for sisters with children. So and so even you know the the mother can be praying right here, and she has a good view of the Imam downstairs, but then if her child is, you know, being a child, then yes. make a little noise and it's, and it's no big deal. Beautiful view of the 
Me and Masala from up here. So the better view is from the middle. Okay, let's check it out and show. And so this area would be the uh, main sisters prayer area. And most of the time it's going to be adult sisters or teenage uh, women who are old enough to, and it'll be quiet if they want to have, you know, this is sort of peace and quiet and solace if you're praying and be less likely to be disturbed by children in this yes. area. Yes. But also, you know, fully open into the downstairs part. So. Um, you know, looking into the balcony, oh, sure. you get a really nice view of, of the entire area. You also can kind of understand the size of it now. So, yes. you know, pretty big square Absolutely. footage. And I think it says, Allahu la ilaha illa hu al hayl qayyum. So it'll say at the kursi so, uh, around the, uh, the inside, starting from right here in the center. Okay. And then also you can kind of get a little view of the, you know, reading some more of the names of, of Allah from here. If you're yes, on the second absolutely. floor, kind of get a little bit closer view of it without having to strain your neck too bad. I love the fact that the uh, windows are huge up here. You can get a nice view of sort of going all the way. You can see the basketball goals way in the distance over there. Oh, so on. So yes. kind of get a good view of the entire property. This is our meeting room. So uh, if the imam wants to meet with someone in private, you know, we can do our Shura Council meetings there. Yeah. They do on Sundays. Uh, some classrooms are actually in that room. You're this is Masjid al-Nabawi. So we have uh, Masjid al-Haram on the other side and Masjid al-Nabawi here. From this area, you can actually see the top floor of our expansion project. Right now there's a window here, but this will be a, a doorway. So you'll be able to just pass directly into so, so essentially the new main entrance will be that entrance down there and then right. when you come up to the second floor to get to this area you'll actually come through this passageway and you can walk in there um, this area will have there's going to be a total of 14 classrooms the area that we're in right now uh, was finally complete ready for occupancy in i want to say 2021 so early part of the covid shutdown that first ramadan that we could not pray fully on lockdown this was still getting completed so by the time ramadan of 2021 came around this place was finished and also the lockdown had lifted and we were actually able to come and pray so our first prayers that were done here were still done in mass you know praying six feet apart but ever since then you know then we've had this place fully up and running just starting this year we started with our expansion project which you probably can see from outside but essentially it's a two-story uh, building it will be a new main entrance so the entrance into the masjid will be from that side of the street right. the bottom floor will have uh, several offices the clinic and then the top floor will have a teenager hangout area with sort of a lounge yes. area also the second floor will have you know people are doing a lot of work from home and so we figured you know if we can work from home why not work from the masjid so there'll be cubicle style rooms Wi-Fi computers and things so for, for brothers or sisters who are working from home but would rather you know come to the masjid just to have a space to work they can come there and do that and then of course if that then goes then they can come over and pray quickly and then you know continue on with work so. Dr. Lo, I had definitely like to ask you you know we saw the house right behind us mm -hmm. the first masala of the yes, masjid yes. and then we have this magnificent beautiful space yes. which is the current masjid and then the phase three is this mega expansion alhamdulillah mm -hmm. what was the reason that this uh, masjid felt that we sh they should have this expansion and continuous expansion number one probably the most obvious is just need the need alone the amount of people that have been moving here to this area alhamdulillah the sort of the family atmosphere that we have i mean i know we we even have people that come here from maybe a little bit further away but just the community here is so so easy to be around and there's so many things for for children and for families and nestled away it's a, and it's a very safe area so every year 100 new families would be moving to this area and we just needed more space found ourselves you know overflowing during ramadan praying in the grass we have to have a bigger masala you know the beautiful organic growth that we have the standpoint of this expansion you know we, we nickname it the eac it's the education activities center we have so many talented brothers and sisters in our community and as a program development somebody says well you know we want to have a Sunday school okay great well we have to have a space how many kids can we get here what ages what grade levels who will be the teachers so that starts to fill in and, and materialize Sunday you know time time and space they can have that part of the masjid well it just grows and grows and all of a sudden now it's it's too small and they, when you have more students that want to be in it and they're putting on a wait list um, we have we can do we can yeah. do uh, uh, sir.
so many more people coming to the community and the growth of the community was happening, we really just saw the need to expand and, and make more space for all the programs. I think the most important thing was just the vision itself, which was, can you get people to love the masjid and just want to be here and uh, spend time in the masjid? Uh, it shouldn't just be to come and pray for Raqqa and just leave. So we try to come up with so many different programs. And during the week, there's um, so many programs for people who are retired or, or sisters or children that are uh, doing the full-time uh, HIFS class. So we needed space for those people. Um, we needed things like an area to just hang out you know people come on Fridays after work after school we have programs on Friday night and so if the program is ongoing and you're just gonna spend some time here at the Masjid so we decided that we needed um, not only this obviously large area for prayer just because we were overflowing I mean every every new Ramadan was new space trying to find and fit and how many cars could park and whatnot now we have weekly programs at night after Asia we have the children like I mentioned um, after school kids coming to do a Quran Hivs uh, program we have sisters doing Khatara in Urdu Khatara in Arabic Khatara in English uh, teaching each other calligraphy we have a hijabista club which is like young girls doing uh, fashion with their hijab wear and, and modest clothing. We have breakfast I mean, every Sunday after breakfast and we just had our 100th uh, breakfast. So we have people coming, but it's all ways to have people come to the masjid. If you're not gonna come, but you'll come for breakfast, alhamdulillah. Maybe you come for the food the first time and you come for the prayer the second time and then you get used to it and you love the fajr and, and so it just becomes your habit. And you know, young children that, you know, that they're, they don't want their parents just dragging them to the masjid, but well, if we have a food vendor night and there's, you know, a halal burrito truck out in the back, and uh, and then the next one is, you know, halal pizza and whatever. So we have uh, different events that people can come and and find ways to hang out. We do a passport to Muslim lands uh, every month. So we select a country, somebody in ICBC. Uh, we have a representation from any country you can think of as a Muslim country um, and beyond. And we have that. And the turnout for that is amazing. Actually, so many people show up, um, but they do. They talk about the food, where they're from, the culture, the history, the clothing, you know, everything you can think of, the artwork. When you have a place, if you can find creative ways to invite people to the masjid, make people want to come here, even just hang out and play soccer, you know, hang out and play cricket, hang out and play ping pong, um, have some food, quilting, or just whatever the case is. Eventually they start to love it. They find their heart coming closer to the masjid. And then of course, the easy stuff comes along. Well, of course, if you're here at 4.30 in the afternoon and the, the Adan for Ashtar comes out, you're gonna come and, and pray Asr with us in Jamaat. That's what I think people really like about ICBC is just that uh, there's so many creative ways to, to have people here. And so then when you are here, you, you, you feel welcome and, and most people are, uh, are happy to be here and, and then happy to pray and happy to be a part of it. So the fundraisers that we have in order to, to fund the expansion and stuff like that, people that they're loving it, they're gonna use it. There's a saying in Austin that we live here, we give here is one of the organizations, but I think that's a very clever way to say it is, you know, you live here, you give here, you, you love this place, you want to be here and so we do find that um, people are very generous as well alhamdulillah dr low mashallah you know you've been telling us so much that happens here obviously the main reason is to bring people to the masjid but why are you making it so attractive for people to come to the masjid because it's like there is no reason that you have left out for not to come to the masjid. This is a heavy emphasis on community yeah. building. Yeah, I think it does start just sort of with the model of the masjid itself. We sort of describe it as a three-tier model. The main model or the main group, the, the one of the tiers is sort of the general body. So just, you know, every brother and sister and family member that, that comes here to pray um, and be a part of the community. The next tier is the Shura Council. So we have a 19-member Shura Council that is actually elected by the community. So the, the general body elects the those 19 members. Uh, there's elections every November to add uh, and replace, you know, if people leave the shura and the next person comes in, if they've done, you know, however many years in their term. It's made up of varying ages of brothers and sisters. We have uh, three sisters on the shura council as well. And then the shura is that second tier going into the third tier, which is the executive board, uh, which is the shura elects those five members out of the shura into the executive board. So that's the chairman, vice chairman, secretary, treasurer, and member at large. Essentially what we do as a shura is we form committees and then the committees are responsible for running the day-to-day -day activities of the masjid. The EB of, of course has sort of oversight over all that but you know we have bricks and mortar type 
uh, committees like logistics committee or we have the administrative committee paying the bills, the light, the water, you know, the cleaning, but then we have the other creative type committees. So we have a DAWA committee, we have welfare committee that runs the Zakat program, we have the education committee and so forth. As those committees are formed and then we have volunteers from the general body who make up those committees. That's where all these great ideas come from. These are all volunteers. People come up with a great idea. They're very creative. Let's start this type of a program. Okay, it's, it's going to be an activity at the masjid. Let's go talk to the activities committee. The activities committee goes through it. That's it. You know, if it's something we can do, we have the space for it. We have the, the talent to, to do it, and, and we can. It's a lot of listening to the community. What do they want? What are they looking for? Trying to find people that might be marginalized as well. Like there's elderly people that don't otherwise have very good transportation to the, to the masjid. Or, well, let's make a program that will invite the elders to come so that that way, you know, they feel included as well. And, and the same goes for children or for sisters or whatever it is. So just as the years have gone by, you know, alhamdulillah, we've, we've really thought of, I think, a great many different diverse programs to run here. And then just the people who want to be a part of it. You know, the more welcome you feel, the more, want, the more you want to come. And then the more you feel like you are a part of it too, you feel like you have a part ownership in the masjid. And uh, Dr. Lo, it seems like, uh, mashallah, this masjid is all about thinking about the future of the Muslims here. Yes. Obviously, this expansion is a part of that. So it seems like the board already knows that there's a massive influx of Muslims that are thinking about moving to Austin, especially in the Brushy Creek area. Sure. Is that is that on your mind and that's why it's so busy? Yeah, absolutely. This, the, you know, if you look up the zip codes, uh, if you go to some, you know, website, what are the fastest growing zip codes in America, um, you'll find these zip codes are certainly on that list. And so, absolutely, we know people are going to be moving here. Honestly, we, you know, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the United States. We expect that, alhamdulillah, Allah guides people to Islam all the time. So, absolutely, we have the expectation that just as in the past years have gone by every year, New families will move here, new people joining the fold of Islam, etc. And so we absolutely have that, that expectation, that vision that why are we putting in 14 classrooms in our uh, education center? Well, they might not be full today, but as soon as those are open, those children that are waiting to get off the wait list into the actual class, they're going to be there. And I think also as if you create a space for people, people will find a way to utilize that space. And so I think that's also part of the vision is just make a big enough place that is uh, accommodating and people will find a way to fill that space. And those classrooms maybe in the future become an Islamic school, you think? Right now, I know for sure it, it's going to be the Sunday school, but those classrooms, it doesn't even have to be for children. Like I said, I mean, we have adults learning Arabic, right. adults learning Hadith and Hatara classes. There are Islamic schools in Austin. One is uh, expanding as well. Uh, we'll be close by to this area, but this place will be, inshallah, I, I know that we'll be full with students and, you know, activity people. Dr. Lo, you mentioned that uh, you became a Muslim. Mashallah, not now you're part of the board of a masjid. In my personal experience, you know, you're the first revert Muslim that I've seen on the board. So how was that journey? I'm sure I'm not the first. <laughs> I can tell you that, alhamdulillah. But yes. um, when I first moved here, so I became Muslim in 2006, but I moved here in 2013. So at least had a, a few years to sort of learn Islam and increase my knowledge. But when I uh, came to the masjid, I noticed those same beautiful qualities that even new people that come tomorrow are going to notice just the welcoming atmosphere and sort of the possibilities are endless. The board always looking for talented people. Um, if we notice that people excel in something and they're engaged and energized, then uh, it's an easy place to get started into something. It starts out with something very simple, just volunteering for iftar in, in the weekends of Ramadan. The more involved you get, the more people may notice that talent, that energy. But uh, like I said, with uh, with the Shura Council, like we have elections. And so um, the first time around, alhamdulillah, I just happened to be nominated. One of the other brothers thought maybe I'd be good at the role. After you go through that process, you know, there's a get to know nights where the nominees can talk about you know themselves and what they think they can offer to the masjid and so my first go around I you know I got elected into the shore council at that time and the committees that I joined and the activities that I was able to be a part of, you know, you really just get to sink into all those beauty, beautiful opportunities. Mashallah, that's amazing. And uh, what message would you like to give? We do have a really well-grounded structure. I think that's very important if you're in a different masjid somewhere else, if you're thinking to come here, the executive board, to the shore council, to the general body, there's a lot going on in the background, so it, and it takes dedicated people to do that. Um, the next thing is our imam. Uh, mashallah, he's, he's wonderful. He really has, has a 
message that really hits home with families and people with children, people who are retired, whatever. He has a very good message. So that's obviously very easy. Um, if you have a great imam, people are going to want to come and listen to the imam give speeches or, or those types of things. The other thing I would just say is you have to find a way to get people to want to come to the masjid, even at face value if it's not because of salah, tahajjud, qiyamul layl, fajr, things like that. Get them to come and play basketball. Get them to come and drink coffee. Get your foot in the door and you just start, again, Allah opens your heart and brings it closer to the masjid. Now there's something about it that you have a fondness for, either if you're thinking of coming here or if you're at your own masjid trying to think of different ways to make it more, more loving and expansive is find ways to get people to just want to get through the door. Once they're here, Obviously, then they'll see, you know, Allah opens their heart and, and it starts to be more more easy to come for even just now back to those a average everyday masjid things. Now they do want to come for salah. Now they do want to come for fajr. The kids are playing, you know, basketball till 10 p.m. on a Friday night while the parents drink coffee out here and tea. Great, you know, they're here, alhamdulillah. But I bet you they'll have a chance to pray Isha, which is great. Just do your best to, any way to get someone to just get their foot in the door and then Allah opens their heart and, and they'll come more often after that. So it's all about making it easier for people. For sure. To make the must of their second home. Yeah, and try to find people that you don't think are coming. Like there are people that might not be coming because there's nothing to do. They can't get here. There's no transportation. Start thinking of those those crowds of people. How can we get that group of people to come to the masjid? What's the thing that would entice that person to come here? And then those yes. breed more and more uh, welcoming opportunities. Very unique way of doing dawah to the Muslims themselves. The Correct. Mashallah. Yeah. It's very beautiful and very lucky and blessed to have this masjid here in Austin, Texas. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much, Dr. Lowe. Really appreciate your time. Love.